Today our topic is culture and cultural identity, psychological overview of variables. Objectives to understand and define culture and cultural identity, to have an overall understanding of important variables in development of cultural identity, to appreciate the differences in Indian context. Dear students, it is a pleasure to introduce to you the topic of cultural identity which is of central importance in today's context. Why do I say so? Cultural identity gives you a sense of being rooted. I say rooted because human being is considered as a blank slate and can be modeled into anybody through training as it grants you a distinct identity in global village. Global village as the world has shrunk in terms of information, traveling and how one event affects the other part of the world through economic and psychological impact. Now, we would like to examine some definitions of important concept. The topic is socio-cultural identity. It consists of two terms, social and cultural. Social, the term refers to the setting in which we grow and develop. It is sum total of our experiences and interaction with our physical and psychological environment. It is a dynamic ecosystem. Culture, it means conventions and rules adopted by a group of people belonging to same geographical or have same ideological affinity to solve their problem. Psychology, students, I am aware that you people by this time would be well versed with the definition of psychology. Psychology is a scientific study of behavior and all mental processes. Cultural identity, it can be termed as some total and a unique product of interactions of variables like religion, group, language, class, gender and region in a particular cultural setting across various developmental stages, which gives an individual distinctiveness. We are enumerating them gender, religion, caste, class, language, region and interact with the individual variables gives you cultural identity. The interaction is continuous and two way across time period and is influenced by the technological advancement. As you can see from the diagram that the variables given in the definition directly contribute to cultural identity and are not passive. Culture constantly adjusts itself to the experiences of the group and identity part takes the changes. None of these variables are watertight compartments and always exist in a context. Having discussed so far, take a look at this picture. You will understand the essence of cultural identity. You can see that there is a woman with colorful hands of mehendi. Another woman is wearing exquisite jewelry. Another looks like a person who works hard with her child. One is from Kathakali and other is from our own Telangana region that is Lambada tribe. Now having seen these pictures, you will get a definite idea as to what it is. These pictures are colorful, aren't they? When you look at the collage, you will intuitively understand that all the variables example gender, class etc are adequately reflected and you might have even guessed the state to which the picture would belong to. A photo is worth thousand words and in understanding dynamic concept like cultural identity with its topological highs and lows, they are very helpful. Now when we enter in the detail of each of the concept. Gender. Gender is an identity 
which in most of the cases is dictated by the physiology and is contiguous. The word contiguous means continuous in relation to time and space in which it is situated along with psychological adjustment. However, in certain cases, one may not see convergence of both the aspects, which accounts for the differences. From psychological perspective, to have a clear understanding of the concept, we can borrow two paradigm from feminism. One, essentialism. Second, social constructionism. Essentialism, the basic premise for this is that men and women differ the way they perceive that is their subjective interpretation of stimulus and experience phenomena. There is an inherent bias in the society as it is a major factor contributing to such differences. Social constructionism. It puts forward a view that gender is a mental construct with which an individual identifies transactions appropriate with one's own gender. To further elaborate, it can be seen that the women are exposed to more transactions eliciting nurturance rather than male transactions like assertiveness. In Indian context, if we see gender has been accorded distinct roles. However, it would be worthwhile to mention that there has been a schism wherein women were equal to men in every aspect and later on where under the influence of patriarchy the privilege was lost. One such example is state of Kerala where in matriarchal society was norm of the day. In Indian tradition even countries compared to mother and both mother as well as motherland have been accorded status greater than any heaven and is very evident from saying Janani Janma Bhumishya Swargadapi Gariyasi. I would like to bring an interesting fact to the notice of the students that according to scripture sannyasa or becoming an ascetic is considered as the highest state. However, in this state the person is indebted to mother. When it comes to transgender as a group there was no discrimination. To quote an example, Shikhandi in Mahabharata was considered to be one of the finest warriors and played a significant role. Similarly, we find the main protagonist Arjuna to have donned the role of Bruhannala for a period of time. In Indian context, woman epitomizes power in form of Shakti and she is worshipped as such. This finds resonance in Carl Jung's theory of anima. However, it would not be just to only eulogize woman and her role. It is a fact that crime against women is on the rise and society has still suffers from evil of dowry and blaming the victim for assault. Religion. Religion is sometimes used as a synonym for culture. However, it would be pertinent to note that it has elements of philosophy ingrained in it. In West, one may not find followers in the name of philosophers, but in India, people identify their sect with a particular philosophy and follow it. Religion is an amalgam of man's quest for knowledge and a valiant effort to answer the questions about his existence. It has a cultural component also which is intertwined in it. Example, various ceremonies need presence of large number of relatives and people with whom we are acquainted. It has a personal aspect which forms part of person's daily routine. Hence, offering stability in lifestyle by repeating the said behavior in procedural manner at prescribed intervals. It has philosophical aspects which are reflected in the literature which even serves the role of historical records for the believers. In today's context, religion has become a controversial word in itself and India has suffered partition post-independence in the name of religion. It would be appropriate that to quote line in Hindi, Mazhab nahi sikhata aapas mein bair karna, which literally means no religion preaches enmity with one another. 
The bitter truth about religion is that it has become a power structure and many elements have infiltrated into its canopy. When rioting occurs, it is largely economic interest which is at the core of the conflict and masquerades as religious violence. Thus, in times where people compete for resources, religion itself becomes victim. Much of moral conduct is prescribed in religion and here we can compare this to macro system in Yuri Bronfenbrenner's macro systems and percolates down to micro systems. Much work on religious symbolism, meaning and its effect on consciousness can be attributed to Carl Jung. William James who has written Principles of Psychology and considered by many as father of modern psychology has written a book variety of religious experiences where he eloquently discusses the psychological aspects. Freud on the other hand considered religious practices as an expression of neuroticism related to feeling of guilt, hence limiting its scope and utility. Caste, we are now going to discuss another topic which is controversial. However, psychology as subject takes an objective view of an phenomena. The term caste can be defined as a complex hierarchy of endogamous groups. Endogamous group means a closed system where people marry within their own group that is kinship is restricted within the group. Though there is no justification, it is believed by some theorists that it was based on the concept of division of labor. However, it has now become a fault line for the society and encourages feelings of in-group and out-group. There has been a concerted efforts by many great leaders, especially by names synonymous with the movements of removing these distinctions, that is B. R. Ambedkar, who had envisioned that only equality in form of constitutional guarantee would help to stop this prejudice and discrimination. Pay attention to last two terms, prejudice and discrimination. Now, we would like to define these two terms, prejudice. It is a bias which establishes itself in thought process and evokes negative feeling about particular group and manifests as negative attitude. As we know that attitude has elements to it that is effect, behavior, cognition. You can remember this is a simple acronym a, B, C. When prejudice manifests itself in behavior, it becomes discrimination. Hence, discrimination can be defined as manifestation of prejudice in overt actions. There is an alternative view also wherein casteism is equated with racism. In Western nations, Gandhiji has also contributed to this movement by adopting strict standard against anti-location and phrasing terms which do not refer to age-old beliefs. Psychology has contribution in this field and comes up as study of socially disadvantaged groups. A socially disadvantaged group is one which is vulnerable to discrimination and members of group do not get equal opportunities as they are not even aware of those opportunities. So, the problem is with proper communication as well as creating awareness by social engineering. Education and modern value system has played its role in reducing negative attitude. However, considerable efforts are still required in this area. Social class. Social class refers to distinction based on economic power one holds. As a matter of fact, if you are told to name few rich individuals, you would be able to name quite few and it needs no explanation that these individuals yield considerable power in society and have resources to bring in social changes by investing in the right cause. In contrast, we will have to examine below poverty line BPL. It is the level below which people are classified as poor. Citizens at this level look for subsistence. Money being the secondary reinforcement has now dominated the psychological landscape and being a resource of prime importance has a major impact. Problems related to poverty are multifold and include malnutrition, 
lack of resources to enhance skill, lack of personal space and social acceptance. We would have come across the term middle class in ordinary parlance. Though there is no strict distinction or definition in most of the countries, they constitute majority and it can be seen the way the term has been devised middle class that neither they are affluent nor they are at the lower rung of the society as far as economic classification is concerned. Urbanization and industrialization played a major role in poverty elevation and has given rise to new aspirational middle class. It is incumbent on policy makers to see that psychological aspects are addressed properly as perceived sense of injustice would lead to discontent and may lead to violent acts such as rioting and as mentioned earlier they often masquerade themselves in the form of religious or caste based violence which further divides the society and affects national integrity and unity. India as a country is blessed with young workforce and faces a typical problem of unemployability which is more severe than unemployment. Unemployability is a situation where there is a mismatch between job requirement and individual's ability. This leads to frustration in masses and consequently their dependence on government increases. It would not be out of place to mention the root of this evil lies in education system wherein superficial attributes like marks are given more importance rather than learning and skill development. Learning as you know is a relative permanent change in behavior. It would be pertinent to mention that concept which is set of interrelated ideas should be focused upon rather than rote learning. Here students can make use of Bloom's pyramid of learning. This would help you to establish as to how mindful practice leads to deep learning and culminates into creativity which is generally confused with wild imagination. I would just like to add one more caveat that when I refer to creativity it refers to a pragmatic approach. Language. One feature that distinguishes human being is ability to learn and transfer that learning to new generation at relatively fast pace so that individuals need not toil hard to rediscover what has already been gained. This represents a great evolutionary advantage for species of humans. Humans are also able to travel across timeline whereby they can learn from their history and speculate about future. This magnanimous ability is given by our unassuming but effective way of communication known as language. Language can be defined as a mode of communication which makes use of symbols and concepts which are arranged to convey thoughts and ideas in verbal form. Nature through evolution has bestowed human beings an excellent vocal cord which are capable of producing many sound which aid language. Our idea of language brings two distinct features to our mind, one language which we speak and its script that is written form. As physiology of the brain forms part of your syllabus, we can study some aspects related to it. In the diagram you can see Broca's area. This area is linked to speech production and is located on the left side. Wernicke's area. This area is important for language development and speech comprehension. It is located on the left side in temporal lobe area. Study of language itself is known as linguistics which includes considerable psychology and these two fields are closely related. Generally, an individual gains ability to speak a particular language through his initial interactions with nurturing figure and in majority of cases it is mother who plays this role of a teacher. In India generally children learn many languages as there are many languages and each with its own peculiarity and primary language gives construct which is known as L1 over which other languages are acquired known as L2 and L3 etc. 
there are some concerns also as the child learns more than one language it creates confusion in some aspects as the same words would have different meanings even after practice there are changes that the second languages interferes with the first one in some aspects a person who knows many language is known as polyglot i know there are many among you when speaking of indian context there are languages which do not have written script one such language is lambada language which is preferred mode of communication for our brethren who belong to this community and tulu language in regions of karnataka to which traditional belong the great king krishna devaraya earlier i had expressed that all topics are interconnected and to add i shall say represents a phenomena rather than individual unit for example if we take topic like language we know that there exists a difference in the way we address gender which seems to be fair enough for the sake of clarity and to refer the attribute however sanskrit as a language believes that the words themselves without their connotative meaning are either male female or neuter connected to this is the concept of religion wherein most scripture of sanatan dharma are in sanskrit and that of buddhism in pali there are certain interpretations that language was associated with class and caste too and finally we know that language is related to region example punjabi kannada malayalam and telugu are related to regions of punjab karnataka kerala and two telugu speaking states respectively this brings us to our next topic that is regionalism regionalism it can be termed as a source of cohesiveness in a fairly large group demarcated by its physical boundaries based on commonality of language culture which belongs to a particular area this type of behavior has its roots in evolutionary psychology wherein a person belonging to same place with same background is less likely to betray you as being in a group which makes survival easy there is also a concept of mere exposure effect that people are acquainted with particular stimulus are likely to bonded well with it india being a large country has been divided into various region based on language it is in public domain that initially it was divided into zones however lopsided development by britishers serving their own interest led to a wide gap in opportunities available for people and the demand of particular group of people speaking particular language and bound by culture started demanding right to self governance within the framework of republic of india it has been a boon in many cases preserving culture and addressing regional imbalances however it continues to be hindrance in unity by stereotyping people and some regions become target due to wrong perception friends now would like to summarize the whole lesson for your convenience we have dealt with various topics like gender caste religion one needs to remember that many of these topics are not independent and heavily interact with each other as students and as students of psychology you need to concentrate on the perceptual aspects of all these problems and come up with a creative solution for example as given in the lesson you had regionalism intertwined with language language again leading to your caste caste leading to class and various aspect hence it would be important that being a student of psychology that you take an unbiased view towards all these topics and whenever you read various lessons whether it be cognitive psychology whether it be statistics or any other subject related to psychology you try to find how these aspects are related to each other and what possible solutions are given in them thank you very much